Hi, everybody. I am Blake Cabot. I am the owner of facepaint.com. And today we are doing festive florals with Amanda Carey. We are. We okay. are. Festive florals. That's right. <laughs> because looking outside my window, it does not look like spring. Just saying for the record. But you can always use flowers, right? So anyway, it's uh, she's Quite a great exactly. teacher. I always love having her on. So this will be a great treat for you guys. So with that said, uh, Amanda, take it away. Thank you very much, Blake. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Amanda Carefood, um, and I my business is, I have two businesses. One is Bling Mania, which is all about bling. Um, I do love a bit of bling. And the other Fires. one is the Face Painting Hub, um, which is a uh, the teaching arm of um, my face painting business, which I run with Elizabeth Gale. So come and follow us. W, uh, we're at www.facepainting-hub.co.uk. We've got a Facebook page, etc. So shameless plug over. Um, what I'm going to do for you today is I'm just going to show you some different florals that you can add to your designs. Um, just so that you can festive them up. They don't, you know, you don't always have to do... Um, <clears throat> actual sort of like gingerbread men and snowmen etc which excuse me <clears throat> obviously kids love but sometimes for the adults they want something a little bit more grown up and these are just some different elements that you can um, add into your designs um, I'll show you how to do them poinsettias um, people find tricky I found them tricky for a long time and then I found a way to do them that wasn't one stroke because I always used to try and do them one stroke and holly seems to be another pain point so I'll show you how to do some holly um, and pine cones as well. And then I'll pop them into a couple of floral designs. Um, I did ghost roses last time, so um, I, I'm not going to do um, a big thing on uh, ghosting, but I'm going to add a little element in there. So I'll do something like this um, and see how the time goes. Absolutely. So, right. So if we start with a poinsettia, now I'm going to be using... Uh, Rosemary Co, which um, I don't know, Blake, if you've got Rosemary Co brushes in yet, because I know you were talking about getting some. You know, I keep uh, bugging Amanda about that one. It's it's on there. It's on the list, I promise. So I, I sent her a list of my favourite Rosemary Co brushes and told her to have a chat with Juliet Eve as well yep. um, to get her favourite ones. Yep. So this is one of them. So this is... Um, called um it's a, a series 366 um and it's an extra point so let me just wipe it off a bit mm -hmm. you can probably see hopefully it's got a really really nice point on it and this is a number eight so it's quite a fat one i've got um, a two a four a six and an eight um, because they are so lovely um i use them all the time and this is how i do my poinsettias so I'm just going to load with a, I can't show you the palette because it's a, a big thing down beside me. It's just a, a basic DFX, I think it's DFX Essential Red. And I'm just going to fully load the brush. And then I'm going to swipe it through. I'm going to get this mixed up first. So whenever I swipe through another colour, I always make sure it's mixed up first. So just mm -hmm. a bit of water. And this is Superstar Plum. It used to okay. be called Old Red. And it is such a gorgeous colour. Really nice for line work as well. Um, and even though a lot of Superstar paints don't line work very well, this one does, um, even though it's a glycerin-based one. So get that worked up. So I've loaded that um, full of the DFX red, and then I'm just going to swipe it through on one side reasonably well. So I've got two different shades of red there. And I'll just do it on here for now, rather than on a, on a, board, on a board, just because it dries a little bit quicker than it does on a board. So I'm just going to see if I can zoom in a little bit there so you can see a bit more what I'm doing. Is that still on camera for you, Blake? Yep, it is. So with poinsettias, they're, with lots of flowers, there's a specific number of petals, but poinsettias, they're, it's almost like they're leaves. So they, they grow through um, red, and then as they kind of um, fall back and more grow through, they go green. Mm -hmm. So there aren't a set number of petals to do. And the thing to remember about poinsettias that I got wrong for a long time is that they don't start in the centre. So if you give yourself a centre point, 
the petal doesn't really start right in the middle and my brush is probably dried up now. So I'm using it half and half. So I've got the DFX red on this side and I've swiped through the Superstar Plum on that side. And you need to bring it out a little bit and then push down so the full belly of the brush goes down on the page and then come up to a point again. And that's why you need a brush with a really nice point on it um, so that it does that splaying out and then coming back together. And what I'm trying to do is just get like a, a gradient of colour. Now I found I haven't got enough of the DFX red on there. So I'm just going to go back in and give it a really good load. So I'm going to try something new. Instead of saying all the names over a period of time, and uh, I'm just going to say hello to all the people that say they're where they're from. Hello, Kim from Western Massachusetts. She's in the Berkshires. Hello, Dottie from Knoxville. Hello, Lena from Scotland. And ho hello, Kim from Kent. And hi, Barbara. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. So all I'm doing here is I'm making sure that I'm leaving a gap in the center, pushing down, pulling to a point, and then I'm laying another one next to it. So I'm getting... Hopefully you can see, I'll lift that up a bit. There's a, a gradient of colour because the um the petals or leaves at the back are darker, and then I'm going to do a lighter layer over the top. And I'm using a you know, quite a big brush for this. You can use um a much smaller one to do smaller ones around the side of an eye, obviously. Mm -hmm. And once you get the hang of it, they're really quick to do. So it's literally just push and lift. And they're different sizes. So you right. don't have to be too precise. You can just kind of go with the flow and make it look quite natural. Now I'm going to rinse the brush off a little bit, but not completely. Because now I'm going to go into um, a yellow. It's a golden yellow from Tag, I think, which is going to make it go very orangey but quite a dark orange and so i've loaded that so it looks quite orangey now because i want the front petals to look lighter and then okay. i'm going to swipe it through the dfx red so i've now got a different gradient so i've got the dfx red on one side and the orange on the other and we got a few more uh hello norcal usa hello pennsylvania hello florida from jennifer and we got hello kent a couple people from kent and hello barbara in wisconsin Hello, everybody. Welcome to the UK. Welcome to the UK. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, nine thirty in the evening here. Yeah, it's late for you. Late last night. Yeah, it's a little bit late. But I've had plenty of caffeine, which is why I'm handshaking a little bit. Yeah. So all I'm doing here is I'm doing slightly smaller petals, and again, I'm holding it so that I've got the orangey colour on one side and DFX red on uh, essential red on the other. And again, just building two parts of the petal mm -hmm. for each stroke. But it's a slightly lighter shade, as you can probably see. And going in between mm -hmm. where I've been before. So that's the effect that you get. Nice. So it's already starting to look like a poinsettia. It is, indeed. And that... If you hadn't, if you didn't do all the talking and me explaining the loading, etc., is really, really quick to do. Now, in terms of the veins, etc., they are. Um, I don't like using black on things like this. I think it looks a little bit too cartoony. Gilbert so thinks that's beautiful. Use, thank you. Um, I'm going to use um, a number one rosemary co uh, rigger, mm -hmm. and I'm going to use a dark green. So I think this is just, uh, I don't actually know which dark green this is, but it's just a very dark green. Um, I will show you on my arm once I've loaded. Okay. So uh -huh. it's, kind of, it's not really dark. It's not as dark as some of the ones I know Global does a really, really dark leaf green. Um, and I like to use green on poinsettias just because the foliage um, is a really nice rich green. So I use that to create the, the veins and the veins are quite prominent. Get rid of those. The veins are quite prominent. 
um, on a poinsettia. But if you look at it, and the best thing to do, and I learned this again from Juliet Eve, who's um, one of my favourite people in the world, mm-hmm. is look at the actual flowers. So if you're looking um, online, look for the actual flowers, not cartoon versions or versions, uh, face paint versions, etc. Look at the actual flowers to see what the structure is, what they look like. And I'm just doing, I'm not doing complete lines. I'm not being really precise because I want it to look quite natural. And it just means that you can be super quick on the job as well. But it just gives it a little bit of definition. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that the darker red petals or leaves behind, they're the ones that have the ribbing on them, the veins. And we've got a few more people from Yukon. Uh, I don't think I've ever had anybody from Yukon, which is an oversight, clearly. And a couple of people from your homeland, Somerset, UK, Suffolk, UK, and uh, Pennsylvania. Well, welcome to everybody. I hope you enjoy this. So on those back ones, I'm just going to do some of the veins. And again, I'm going to keep it quite light. But again, if you look at poinsettias, you will see that the veins on the, they are more like leaves, the veins on the petals. And I think if you investigate uh, about what poinsettias are and the structure of the petals and leaves, you might find that they are all leaves. They don't actually have flowers. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. I'm sure if there's any botanists that are watching. Hopefully no botanists here. Um, it's always frustrating when somebody knows more than you do. Well, I'm I'm not a florist or a botanist or know anything major about these things, but that's my guess from having owned the plants, I suppose you could say. Now the center Rosie of the is the only face painter in Yukon. Oh. That's an accolade. So I think that's probably true for a lot of people in Yukon. If I was to guess, I would say that if <laughs> I was the, the, the cl- I'm the only clown supplier in Northwest Connecticut, I can tell you that. Or face oh. paint supplier. So the center of these, um, mm-hmm. they're like little, um, uh, like green and yellow stamens. And that's where the, the new leaves or petals come from. Mm-hmm. So you can just dot around different sizes. And then if you want to add some highlights, again, I don't want it to look cartoony. So the yellow that I've got on my brush, I'm just going to get rid of some of that, knock some of it off so it doesn't look too cartoony and looks a little bit more natural, just to add some little highlights. So it's almost like using a a semi-dry brush. Dottie says you make this look so easy. Well, I promise you, it never used to look easy. Uh, A request (laughs) is to zoom in just a tad more. Yeah. There we go. Thank you very much. The pick is fuzzy. I think that's probably why. Okay. Thank you. And hello, Las Vegas. So that's that's the base flower. And you can add, um, like I've done here, I suppose I could add in some of the leaves, couldn't I? Warrington. Um, So I'm just going to use another Rosemary Co. This is um, a half inch series 310. I love their brushes. Absolutely love their brushes. Um, And I'll just use, this is uh, Garden Gnome. It's one of my favourite green cakes because it's got a a gradient of two greens. One's more of a, um, like a tealy selection. Um, but I'm going to use the more traditional greens for this. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to do more poinsettia leaves. I'll turn it into a bit more of a design. Okay. Like the one at the top. And which cake is that one? This is Garden Gnome from DFX. Okay. It's brilliant. That's it's good really one. good. Really good for doing... Um... Leaves? Oh, leaves, yes. Uh, tartan as well. I'll show you the tartan in a minute. Mm. I love doing tartan. Um, so if I was going to, well, let me show you how to do the spruce. Let me do um, these bits here. 
So spruce is really easy. So imagine if this is going down an arm, you would want, you wouldn't want it straight down, straight up and down like that. You would want to have some sort of movement to it. So often when I'm doing an arm design, I would actually put in a light line of maybe white or just off white, just as a guide. So here, I'm just going to do that and like it's coming through, just so it's got a little bit of movement right. down the arm. Mm -hmm. Now, I should have used a flat for this because it's a little bit more tricky with an angle brush. Jennifer asked a question. She loves to edge my green leaves with red. Why is there no dark green to yellow ochre split cakes? Do you know of one? Does anybody know of one? Dark green to yellow ochre. Uh... Off the top of my head, no. I'd have to go and do a little bit of research on that. Well, maybe somebody online knows. Yeah. So all if I'm not, doing is I'm, one. I'm well, exactly. I'm just using the chisel edge. Um, so literally just the, the sharp bit. I'm not putting any pressure on at all. I'm just tapping it. So exactly as you would as uh, if you're doing a feather. Body really color easy. has one. Ah. But that's 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 um Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Barbara. Uh, oh, the snake split cake has dark green to yellow, says Lunelli. Okay. I think that's Yeah, it, it does. But so this one is, um, that's green carpet, which is similar to snake, DFX green carpet. But it doesn't okay. really go to yellow ochre. Yellow ochre's got like a, a touch of brown in it, like a little bit of tan in it. It's a, and I more think there's one yellow. on the craze palette. The bouquet palette. So there's a couple of them oh, out there. Okay. We just came out with one of those um, not so long ago. Right. What I've done, I've actually switched to a flat, which is the 5 8 Lush Leaf um, from Art Factory by Andrea. Um, just because I should have used it in the first place. Of leaves and things like this, I just find easier with a flat. And then I'm just going to tip. Um, the lighter edge in a bit of worked up white. So I've worked this up already just so it's nice and creamy. And I just want a white edge because I want the spruce to look nice and snowy. And you need to start at the tip because if you start at the bottom, the dark heel will be going mm -hmm. over the top of your white, which you don't want. Let me zoom that in a little bit more. Great, thank you. There you go. So starting at the top, and you will have to reload the white. And you just go backwards and forwards across the base that you've created. And it just gives you a little snowy, just fills it in a bit and makes it look a little bit snowy. And you can do these with smaller brushes for smaller areas. And that's it. That's how quick and easy that is to do. Now, you can obviously use your brush to create um, as it's already loaded some other leaf effects. You can just do single ones like that or bring out some variegated ones. So you're Jennifer, always trying I would to appreciate movement. it. Message me and I'll uh, see what I can do. And then you can just use the, the edge to bring out some fronds. Like that. Mm -hmm. um, and if I'm finishing off with the line work, oh, I've got to show you this. So this is one of the new body color cosmetic brushes from Tiffany Beckler. Oh my goodness, this little thing is a dream to paint with. I cannot tell you how gorgeous it is. And I, I I'm Tiffany a huge- at the Ace Convention. Uh, yes, she was there, wasn't she? Yes, um, she was. So her range launches on the 27th of November, I want to say. And I've been very, very lucky. I've got a friend in high places called <laughs> Irene Melvin, funnily enough. We were talking about her earlier. And she very yeah. kindly sent me um, the remainder of the set uh for as a christmas gift so thank you very much irene but they're all available from the 27th and i'll do a demo on the brush strokes group of those so this um i'm gonna zoom in again just so you know. i'm not sure if you can is that zoom i oh, know it's not staying zoomed in is it no 
no, it doesn't like it. Never mind. Um, but it it's I'm just thinking where I can put it because I can't fill that space. So I'll do it up here. And it does the most beautiful teardrops when you load it properly. That always helps. Too much talking. The most beautiful teardrops, but also the most beautiful swirls. Obviously, I'm painting on tan card here, so it dries up quicker than it does on skin. I will show you on my arm as well. She will be at max too, uh, says Barbara. And everybody likes Irene. Gilbert, Barbara, I like Irene. Everybody loves Irene. Irene's gorgeous. Yes, I'm I'm looking forward to Max. I'm waiting to book my ticket on uh, next Friday, uh, on Black Friday. So that's that's kind of created a, a little bit of movement there. Again, you can use your little pointy brush just to bring out some, fill some gaps, et cetera, with your round. Um, and if you find, and this is a really good trick, if you find that you've done some line work or some teardrops that are too dark or they're just, they're too obvious in the design. So those, I don't think they're too obvious, but um, they're, they're quite dominant, if you like, in the design because of how dark the green is versus the red. If you then load up with some white and you double up, you go back over the top of them, it just breaks them up a little bit. And you can do that with any kind of line work, but it still gives, it's almost like you've outlined the teardrop, which makes you look really clever, but you actually haven't. You've just done another teardrop inside. You can use a smaller brush to do it if you want to, um, but just okay. using a little bit less pressure can give you that effect. And obviously you can finish off with some dots, etc., or a stencil. Again, this is really nice for dots. As you can see, I always use dots to cover up the untidy bits as well, where things join. There we go. So, sorry, it won't zoom in any more than that. So that obviously you could put that um, around the side of an eye, down an arm, across a shoulder, decolletage, anything like that. It'll look lovely. Glitter as well. I'm not going to put glitter on this just because it's um, card, but obviously lots of glitter on there. Um, so that's poinsettia. Um, I'll okay. show you the holly leaves, etc. Mm -hmm. As well. And again, I'm going to use the, um, the flat brush for that just because I find them. I know some people use angle brushes. Helen for... says that's absolutely stunning, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it took me a while to get poinsettias, and it was actually looking at real poinsettias that helped me. Um, Who knew? That actually looking at the real stuff actually matters. Oh, it does, 100%. Because okay. if all you do is look at cartoon images or other people's face paint of something, that's already going to have been interpreted in a different way to reality. So mm -hmm. always look at reality first. I usually look at the real thing, and then I'll look at cartoon versions or tribal versions um, or look the, look up um, fabrics, that sort of thing, and see, you know, see what I can, you know, how, how I can adapt it to make it simple to paint on the job. Um, and also um, acrylic artists like Donna Dubry, um, I watch her a lot and adapt what she does to face paint. So, right, for holly leaves, give yourself some guides um, is my best advice. Do it for any leaves. Always give yourself a guide if you're not sure where you're going with it. So creating an arrow and a finishing point. And that will mean that your eye is always trying to bring the brush back to that centre. Because so often what happens... Let me find a clear page. So often what happens, you start off with your holly leaf. Mm -hmm. You're going up like this and then you come across and then you find that all of a sudden you've got this ginormous gap in the middle and then you're trying to fill it in. And it's gone way too big. Whereas if you give right. yourself guides like that, it means mm -hmm. that your eye is always trying to bring the heel of that brush back into the centre. Very good. 
Beverly thinks this is a great webinar, by the way. And I, I take all the credit. So you should. Uh, yeah, it's all me. It's all me there because they're watching me. No. Thank you very <laughs> much, Beverly. So just going back to this. So starting with now, I like to start trying to draw with the point of the dark tip when I do this. Now, I don't know if you can see this because it won't zoom in very well. So I'll try and hold this up and do it to make it easier to see. So rather than just starting with a chisel edge on that uh, guideline there, I'm going to start with a brush tilted away from me so that I'm actually drawing up with that dark edge first, which gives it a slightly more complete look. Mm -hmm. And Holly, so it has very pointy bits, this is because I'm holding the pad rather strangely, Holly is quite irregular. Again, go and look at holly leaves. So they are not symmetrical. They they bend, they fold. They've um, the one thing they do have is oh, didn't want to do that. Um, is they're really pointy. Having said that, you can actually get a holly which is soft and not spiky. So that that is basically it. And the trick with it, the two things that you, you, if you struggle with holly, that will really help you. One is the guidelines and two is just practicing twisting the brush in your fingers like this and doing strokes all the way around. It doesn't matter what they look like, getting the muscle memory to twist the brush like that will help you with so many different things, I promise you. So practice that. And then again, you can just tilt the brush and use the dark edge to bring in a vein. I don't like doing the veins in here. Again, I find it looks a little bit cartoony, but if, if you want to do that, then go for it. Um, so while I've got green on my brush, let's, um, so this one down here, um, that one, again, you can do with a flat or an angle. And it's just starting, again, start with the length that you want it to be, because that just gives you a good guide. And I'll always start with the darkest edge first. And I'm just using one point of the brush just to pull out. And then I'm going to flip it so I've got the lighter edge. And this is not as easy with a flat brush as it is an angle brush. Just because you haven't got that point. And then when you're doing your highlights on a design, you can go back in and use my Rosemary Co. again for that. Poinsettia is my favorite flower. This is a beautiful interpretation. Thank you, says Iris. Oh, thank you. And Beverly says yeah. she received an order from me and she's very happy. That's great. Thank you very much, Beverly. So again, Poinsettias you can... are yours, are your favorite as well? Mine? Yeah. What's your favorite Christmas flower? Is oh, there another Christmas flower besides Pinsetias? I don't know. Um, my favorite, well, my, I actually, I love snowdrops because that, mm, yeah. even though they, even though they're sort of like just after Christmas, that's right. like the first signs of life for spring for me, which I love, even yeah. though I like all the seasons, it's that when they sort of like pop their heads up and then the crocuses, do you get crocuses over there? Okay. You get crocuses over there, Blake? Uh, wait, crocuses? Yeah, we get crocuses up in Connecticut yeah, anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the snowdrops and the crocuses, that's that's one of my favourite sort of like seasonal flowers. So that that's literally just a little bit of spruce. You can stick that on the ends of a design, um, you know, sort of like coming down a, a cheek, etc if you wanted to. So this is, I'm basically showing you techniques here that you can add to your designs. So, right, berries, berries that, you know, you think berries are simple and to a degree they are. So I'll use, um, this is, I actually quite like this for berries. This is this is the Superstar Plum. It's quite dark. I, I like using, um, Superstar plum and then like a, a dark tealy green, like a superstar petrol, something like that, like this one, together for festive designs, especially for, for grown ups. It's even though I like the traditional red and green, I just think it looks a little bit more grown up. 
So obviously when you do dots, loading up your brush really well and getting a good old blob on the end is the best way to do dots. This isn't the best brush for it, to be fair. But what you then have is you've got quite a lot of paint there, which takes a, a while to dry. And I discovered that these, if any of you have invested in these, which are stencil brushes, they're um, originally used for ink blending, called in ink blending tools. And you can get them in different sizes and some have angles, etc. They're really good for berries. And they usually come in sets where you've got different sizes, so you can do little tiny berries as well. Just be careful how wet you get it. And whatever you do, don't try and stencil white with it after rinsing it because the red absorbs all the way up. It needs a jolly good clean. So these just give a really nice round, but without too much paint. The only thing they don't do is vary the size. So you have to like give it a wiggle if you want some bigger than others. So then you'll be able to highlight them quite quickly, which is nice. Um, always good for the job when you can speed things up. The other way to do them that I quite like is using a filbert. And I'll use the DFX um, Essential Red for that. And with the filbert, there's, I might need to lift this up again to try and show you this. So hopefully you can see that. So the filbert, you can get different size filberts, but you can, just lay it in two directions to create a circle because it can be quite difficult to get a circle sometimes. But if you practice, and I know this is not going to go well now, you can actually draw a circle with it, again, just by twisting it in your fingers, which is almost a circle. So again, a quick and easy way to do it because it's got a rounded tip. So you use, use the shape of your brushes to help you is basically the tip there. And what you can also do is tip it with a bit of white and then you don't even need to highlight it. So when you do your circle round, she says, when it works, you've actually got a variation of colour there already. So you don't need to put a cartoony highlight on there. So that's those. I will. What are we like for time? We're oh, that's a good five, question. Five We've got minutes. 26 minutes left. Okay. I'll do you a quick pine cone only because these uh, are one there's of still my a request to points. see it zoom it in a little bit more. Yeah, no, I'm I don't know why I keep trying to zoom in and then it goes back out again. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, Iris says candy cane so, amaryllis. That's good. A Christmas cactus. That'd be good. A Christmas not... cactus. Yeah. 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 I won't be painting one of those tonight. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. That, that, that's, 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 well, you can use a filbert or you can use a petal brush for these. Mm -hmm. um, I know some people use a, like a flat petal brush. I'm going to use a round one. This is a PXP number six. This is like a, a petal rather than a flora. So in terms of the two different ones that I'm referring to. So this one has got a round ferrule, the metal bit. And this one has got a flat. Oh, can you see that? There we go. This one has got flat ferrule. Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, that's why it keeps zooming out because when I come close to the camera, I've just seen it zoom out again. Uh -huh. It's obviously not liking that's it. That's what does it. Don't, uh -huh. don't do it. Right. Don't do it. So let me zoom back in. Great. Thank you. And then I won't come near the camera again. <laughs> Ever again. That was Ever last again. you saw that camera, people. Narciss right. Narcissias. Uh, what's that? Is that birth? birth flowers from December. Um. So pine cones, you literally just load with a brown. Um, I'm not even sure what brown this is. I think it's a superstar brown. Um, it's not a really dark brown. Um, load your brush with a brown, and then you're just doing double dip petals, mm -hmm. and that's all it is. So get a little bit of white on the tip. You do have to keep going back in the white. 
And I don't use, I use this as a dipping white. I have a line work white, which I never put any other color brush in. I just use for line work, but this is my dipping one. And I'll work up the white, push it into the center. And then the only bit I've ever got to clean is this bit. And then for your pine cone, is that, I've just done it again. I've just gone near the camera, haven't I? And it zoomed back out. <laughs> You're going to love it. Technology. So you're just doing double dip petals. Now, the only problem with this is that it can get a little bit wet. So you have to try and make sure your white paint and your brown paint on the brush are quite creamy. Mm -hmm. And you just go round and you're always overlapping, just like you would with brickwork. Go back in if you're losing the white. Right. Any way we can zoom that in a little bit more? As it zoomed out again. Yeah, it zoomed out again. Yeah, it's every time I come close to the camera. Is that a little <laughs> bit better? <laughs> I zoomed out again. Forget it. I give up. Oh. <laughs> Let me see if I can. It just doesn't like it, does it? Maybe it's no, no. Is that better if I hold it? Yeah, I guess. I, mean, I could see it better. I'll say that for it. So I'm just doing double dips, literally. Just tipping back in into the white. But as I said, you have to have your paint quite creamy because mm -hmm. the base of each of these, where you're pushing down with a brush, you're getting a lot of wet paint, which can then start to just go muddy. You see, it did here a little bit. Mm-hmm. But that is just a quick and easy way to do some pine cones. And if you find, like here, you haven't got much definition, you can just tip your brush with white again and just go back in and do another little bit of white on the edges so it looks a little bit snowy. And it will still look, if you put that in, in a design, um, that will still look like a pine cone. Hopefully you can see that. Can you see that okay? And for me, lots of these things, it isn't making it look realistic, you know, like a like perfect. It's right. some sometimes it's just giving the suggestion of it. Mm -hmm. So that that will be a suggestion of a pine cone. And people will see pine cone. Right. Just because it's the right kind of shape and it will be in the right setting. It will be with uh, some greenery like this. Yeah. So like if you just put it on a brown cone. board, it doesn't work so well. No, it doesn't. Definitely. No, you gotta right. have a whole stick. So, why don't I put some of that into a design on a board? Okay. Uh, there's one I've prepared earlier. So I've sponged a base on this already, just because, mm -hmm. um, as we all know, sponging mm -hmm. and boards isn't very nice. Oh, um, here's a question um, from Charlotte. Would it be possible it's to slow motion of a general one-stroke leaf? Mine are always end up looking chunky and not elegant. So maybe just I put it on can. your arm if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. So any old leaf. Any old leaf. Well, how about a green one? I've got green on the brush already, so... There we go. Yeah, shall do. Right, so hopefully you can see that. Is that in focus? Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. So if you're doing your guide strokes, so the simplest way to do a leaf is just come up, twist the brush to mm -hmm. a point. And then the other side. That was a really simple leaf. Okay. And can you do a, a holly leaf like that? Yeah. I will do that next. So again, using guide strokes. So coming up and you are literally, there's very little pressure. Hardly, if you look at the bristles, they are barely bending. So I'm just using the chisel edge. Uh-huh. And then it's rotating in my fingers as I come down. Nice. Okay. 
but if you i'll show what happens if you use a lot of pressure and i think this is certainly where i used to go wrong when you when you put the chisel edge on if you then push down two things happen one is that all the paint in the bristles starts to squidge and mix together uh-huh and that if you look when i lift off it's just all mixed together and then you can't get because you're you've got this edge of the bristles you're not getting a clean edge on it because you're just right. pushing too hard so if you're struggling and ending up with something like that you're just using too much pressure mm -hmm. you literally you're barely touching your skin and just practice practice that on your arm on your leg just using very little bend in the bristles and so many strokes yep. you'll find especially with one stroke will come out so much better if you mm -hmm. lighten up okay word to the wise right um what was i doing oh, that's right i was going to do something on here got it? about 18 minutes oh plenty of time plenty of out. time Knock out 15 faces in 18 minutes. I couldn't actually. I'm not a speed painter. Right. So I'm going to use, this is one of um, the new, um, oh gosh, I can't remember her name. Amy Grigg, is it? Um, Amber Rose. They're from um, the Silly Farm ones, I think. Uh, Arty Cakes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use my favourite One Stroke Rose brushes which are completely rubbed off. These are PXPs. They're really short, quite mm -hmm. firm. And I use them for ghosting all the time. Beverly says, thank you for the great tip. Oh, you're very welcome. And Becky says, lighten up the story of my life. <laughs> story of all our lives. Ain't that the truth. All need, a, all that need a dose of lightening up sometimes, don't we? Yep. So true. Right, so when you're loading, again, don't put on too much pressure when you start loading because all you'll do is push the moisture out of the belly of the brush into the cake and make it muddy, which we don't want. So even though this isn't true ghosting because I've loaded with colour, I'm still going to tip with white, even though that has got a strong white in it because I want a really clearly defined edge to my rose. And I'll go back and I'll tip with white on pretty much every single stroke so i'm not going to go into detail about roses because i did a rose webinar last time so i'm just going to start with a bud which you can go, you guys can watch whenever you feel like it exactly now i'm not going back into the one stroke for two reasons one because if i keep feeding the tip with white it's not going to dry up and right. two because if you keep going back into um shimmery colors pearly colors they go gloopy really, really quickly. So reload as infrequently as you possibly can is my advice on those. I'm not going to do this huge. I'm just going to do a few little petals. And the base on this, I've got, um, I think it's a tag gold. And, um, oh, what was it? Rose, uh, rose gold i'm not sure if superstar do that anymore i've just got it in my practice kit i was looking for it the other day online um superstar do this it's almost like a glittery rosy goldy color really really pretty and i could not find it anywhere which was a little bit disappointing do you know blake if superstar do it do, do you what? know every single product um rose gold do, do you know every single, single product, product. product in no, your store? No, I have no idea. <laughs> I, I, I have no clue. I, 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 we sell a lot of stuff from Superstar. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I just don't know. Well, um, I will keep searching. If anyone else knows, I'd love to know. Right, I'm going to, um, while I've got my brush loaded, again, I've not gone back into the split cake yet. I'm just going to put in a little bud up here and close that off. And again, I'm going to do one upside down. Just so that I'm creating a, a curve. So I'm going for a curved effect around the eye rather than straight up and down. Because that just is more pleasing to the eye generally. 
Now, a little technique that um, I'm a big fan of is... Uh, where's my finger? Where's oh, uh, the superstar discontinued that color. Oh. No longer make it. No wonder I couldn't find it. Well, that has something to do with it. Yeah. It's a little bit annoying. It's gorgeous color. I don't know why they discontinued yeah. it. So this is um, Superstar um, Petrol mm -hmm. with a color. I've got no idea what it is. It's another Superstar color, but I put them in the cake together just so I had a a nice teal combination. Um, so with this, I'm just going to dob a little bit of color and I'm going to turn these into holly leaves. Terrific. And this is such, if you're not great with one stroke and they get muddy, this is such an easy technique to use. Now that's all I'm going to do with that. And I'm going to use a, where's it gone? I've lost my brush. Ah, there we go. So this is a uh, half inch PXP. Mm -hmm. Angle brush? Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, short angle brush. And these, because I use these for ghosting all the time, is the ones that I only use with white. I've got a little white dot of nail varnish on. So I never, ever put these in a colour because, as we know, the colour travels up the ferrule a bit and I want to make sure they stay pure white. So I have two sets, one for ghosting with white and one for everything else. So these, I'm just going to do some, I'm going to do some holly leaves and some normal leaves. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if... Maybe if I can lift that up and do it, you might be able to see a little bit better. Is the light shining on that or not? Is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. So I'm going to put, actually, I'm going to bring that down a little bit there, a little bit closer. So I'm going to put a, a holly leaf in here. And all this does, the wet end of the brush, and again, I showed this in detail on the last webinar, the wet heel, because I've got no colour on the heel, just blends, and the white tip creates a really pretty effect. So I'm going to do a normal leaf in here. And I'm just tipping back into my worked up white each time, just so I get a nice clean white edge. I'll do another little holly leaf coming down here. Mm -hmm. And then just use the tip just to draw in the veins. Right. In the center. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. That's very pretty. And again, they don't have to be perfect well they should though well everything should be fortunately five minutes yeah. five minutes means they rarely are well <laughs> there is that problem you're saying uh, uh michelangelo could have done the south wall of the sistine chapel in 10 if he really got his mind to it well yeah but you know it would be really interesting to know or to see if some of the like the the masters how they would do with face painting and the speed that you have to face paint at. I wonder, I, I wonder. Really but we, I, actually, I, there's a fair number of people that are, um, uh, that are in face painting that are professionally trained uh, artists and they, they, yeah, very true. Free, Frida Haas is one of them. Frida Haas is one of them. Uh, Matteo Arfinati, I know does that. Yeah. Um, a couple of people I know, um, uh, Dutch, uh, Bahari, I would think yeah. he was a classically trained artist. Um, and um, they, you know, it's a, it's a different skill set. Oh, Donnie. it is, but it's obviously transferable. It is, but it is. They're, they're transferable skills. So, yeah, um, it certainly takes an eye either way. But I think but, for me, it's the speed. The, the speed yeah. you have to paint at on the job is it's just different. a significant difference. You don't have time for all of that, you know all the little tiny details, etc. So hopefully you could see how I was creating these leaves and all of them. So my focal point is here and everything is pointing back to the focal point, but it is also coming round in a curve to another focal point here. 
So the rose is the focal point that everything's going back to. So Here's that you've got question. almost like a circular effect. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now, uh, Beverly asked, do you use cheaper paint when you're practicing? No, I use expired paint. <laughs> <laughs> So oh. I've just so everything that has basically gone out of date. So pretty much everything from COVID is my practice kit. So everything that I had to expire, I've now got a huge kit of expired paint. Mm -hmm. So I just use that. Fair enough. Why not? That makes that makes total sense. So and sometimes I, you know, I buy off the second hand group if there's something I haven't got that I want. Um, again, because other people sell their expired paint, I uh, get a few quid for it to buy new stuff because I paint lots of boxes. Mm -hmm. Those that don't know, so I use, and it's it's really good, great idea for Christmas as well. Actually, this this is so that's one of the boxes. So I send um, my stuff out in these, but I paint all of them, which is great practice. So I was practicing for today doing this. Wow, that's very pretty. Thank you. Um, but great, paint paint your Christmas parcels. Get some brown parcel paper. Um, don't wrap the present first. Cut a section off. Paint your design on it. Wrap the present in brown parcel paper and then stick your design on the top. They will wow. love it. People really will love that. Matter of fact, everybody should send me a gift, something expensive. And uh, in that paper, that would be good. Why not? Why not? So I'm just filling some of the gaps with an alternative green. Uh, just doing some little tiny leaves. Michelle says, thank you for sharing. She's painting at the local boardwalk. And I'm just going to pull out some little tendrils. Just because it looks pretty. Mm -hmm. Sure. And that's just using the very toe of the brush. So the heel isn't touching at all. Right. Right, now I'm going to use my, wherever it's gone, there we go. I'm going to use my old red with my... Um, uh, do you have to seal it with something when you paint the box? Uh, yeah, I seal it with hairspray, an old trick that my old art teacher used to, before, well, at, at school, when many, many years ago when I was at school, they couldn't afford um, proper fixing spray, so um, he just used to have a can of hairspray on his desk for us to mm -hmm. fix our pictures with, so I now use that to fix the paint. So if it's raining on the day when they're delivering, um, it generally holds up okay. So I've just loaded this with some old red, uh, not old red sorry it used to be called old red it's now called plum by superstar um and i'm just going to put in some little berries mm -hmm. like so. uh becky says i keep the painted uh, boxes I had from Amanda when I bought when I bought the bling, I will treasure them forever. Oh, bless you, Becky! Is that Becky Shaw? Is it? Uh, Becky. Brooks. No, Becky Keen. Becky. Becky Brooks. Oh goodness! Brooks. I know. I know several Beckys. Well, that, clearly, uh, you know a lot more Beckys Becky. than I do. Um, uh, what is the name of the stencil brush again? Um, they're called ink blending tools or an ink blending brush. Okay. So I'm just doing some little dots with my um, body color number two. Uh, this is Beverly's first live webinar. I hope it wasn't horrifying, Beverly. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> we do this every Monday um, and um, we save them. So you'll get a copy of this, I think, on an email. And um, it's great fun. We have some fabulous artists. You can learn a lot of stuff. They are. Do you know they're amazing? I was watching the, um, uh, oh, how many years was it? Twen the 200th anniversary. 
I, I, I haven't done it for 200 years because yeah, I was gonna I'm say. old, but I'm not that old, right? I mean, let's just let's be honest. Fair enough. But no, I was that was amazing with um, with Frida and Marcella. You know, everybody. It was just it was fantastic. I loved it. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Good technical fun as well. I'd imagine talking between all those different people. Yeah. Well, they're all they're all good. That's a good group. I think everyone watching loved it. I know I did. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. So all I'm doing, I'm just trying to make it look a little bit more festive now with some little additions. And obviously you can sling glitter all over it. Um, what else can I do on there? Let's, um, I'm a bit worried about how wet that is. If I now try to stencil over the top, it's going to splodge everything. Yeah, it's it? always tough on boards. I mean, that's that's the trick about boards. They just don't... They're not made out of human flesh. And if they were, we probably couldn't sell them. Very true. I know what I was going to do. I was going to show you the um, this little brush. And this these are really short, these brushes, these body color cosmetic brushes. Sorry, I'm not on any commission or anything. I just, I can't believe how much I love this brush. So that's this great. is a, that's a rosemary Co. just in comparison for size. Mm -hmm. um, there's a Lush brush, mm -hmm. which are slightly longer. What other rounds? So an Alia, so I like the Alias. But again, they are significantly shorter. Now, apparently, um, I have it on good authority, because um, Tiffany is uh, predominantly uh, a body painter, sometimes you need to get, you know, when you're body painting, you have costumes on and things like that that you're working around. So a, a shorter brush is really helpful. Mm -hmm. And it's got this chisel edge as well on the base that mm -hmm. you can um, use for glitter, which multi-purpose, love it. Um, so I, let, I, I was going to show you. Okay, well, sorry. Go, Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say I was going to show you on um, on my arm how beautifully this um, this swirls and teardrops. I was going to do that earlier and then didn't do it. So you get mm. some really. It hasn't got. Uh, it's not a traditional round. It's got a little bit of a point on it, but I don't mind that on my teardrops. And you can do your your dragon drops as well. I'm not so good at those. Mm -hmm. Like that. So. That's really nice. But the swirls for me, hopefully you can see this. And they come around, they don't split. And it just comes round into the most beautiful point. It does indeed. See how beautifully that moves. Look at it. Ah. Oh, it's just, oh, it went totally off camera. They're showing you how beautifully it moves. I moved out of the way beautifully. No, actually, no, we saw it. it your camera <laughs> you it does a weird thing of refocusing. That's the negative. It's but when strange, you move off camera, it? it just follows you anyway. Um, so, yeah. Oh, okay. It. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah, but I, honestly, that is, I think, is my new favorite uh, liner. It's okay. not as so good on boards, though. But then okay. nothing is. In fact, I'm going to use an alley on the board just because it, Goes I better think on the we're board. running out of time here. Are we? Oh my goodness! Is that gone time, already? Time flies right, when you're having just, fun. Let me just put in my last few little. It's a body pictures. color brush, Lynn. Body color cosmetics by um, Tiffany Beckler. Yeah, Tiffany Beckler. But they're not hurting. available yet. She's got a website, but they're yeah. um, they're released on the twenty seventh, I do believe. Okay. So you could obviously put like a frosty stencil on there, something like that. Mm -hmm. Snowy stencil. Um, that's what I did on that one. And then a little bit of glitter. Mm -hmm. Yep. Beautiful. So there we go. Sorry, I didn't there realize how much I've been talking. Well, <laughs> no, it's it's kind of the point is after all. So uh, that that's great. Um, uh, thank you, as always, Amanda. That was lovely. Uh, thank next you for having me week, on again, Blake. Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm th always thrilled. Uh, we're having uh, Corey Morgan next week uh, doing metallic effects, our superhero nut. And uh, he will be here at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. And uh, then we're going to do a Christmas easy menu with Marcella Bustamante on uh, December 4th. So thank you very much, everybody. Have a great evening. Enjoy face painting as always. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.